Olivia and welcome back to Live in Literature. Thank you so much for all the love and support I received in my last video and if you have not seen it yet feel free to head on over to my channel to check it out. No. Okay guys well welcome to the month of October. It is an officially spooky season. Woo! Look at, look at, it's freaking bats. I love Halloween. Now as you've seen from today's video title it's called My Favorite Spooky Reads. Now, I want to preface this video with saying that, like, spooky meaning... What is spooky mean to you? What is, like, scary to you? What is considered a spooky vibe? You scare everybody? Donald, on the scare meter you're barely a squeal. <laughs> She's right. You're not going to frighten anyone dressed up like a big red bunny. Bunny! And so for me, what I've decided to, uh, to make a spooky vibe is basically anything that gives me, like, Halloween feels anything that has like Halloween-esque characters or like Halloween-esque like um, stereotypes. Also things that are like slightly haunted, eerie, mystical, like in that kind of way, in like the spooky way. Ooh, I just got the chills. Oh yeah, from this float, not your speech. Now I will promise that like all the books I'm gonna recommend to you today, none of them are like truly outright like horror story books. <laughs> Okay, sorry. If you came for a horror channel, like you came to the wrong channel, okay? Like as you've seen from my like uh, intro, it's rainbows. Like literally, it's like, it's like Katie from Horton Ears of Who, you know? In my world, everyone's a pony and they all eat rainbows and poop butterflies. So like you came to the wrong channel if you're here for like actual scary stuff. Sorry to disappoint you if you really are. If you're looking for something like that, you can head it over to Stephen King's channel. I don't know if he has a channel. Does he? Somebody look that up. Guys, he actually has a YouTube channel. I didn't even know he did. See, look, it's right here. So, um, if you want horror stuff, follow, um, Stephen King on YouTube. Or, you know, you could just keep following me and just keep getting my content. Because, like, I mean, I'm not trying to compare myself to Stephen King, but, like... Da -da 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 -da. It's the um, yeah, so none of the books I'm going to recommend to you guys today are, like, truly, like, devastatingly scary. But they will be really fun and they have all of like my favorite like Halloween type elements in them that I think are worth reading. So these are my favorite spooky reads. So let's get started. Why do you like Halloween so much? It's always Halloween in my soul. The first spooky read I want to recommend to you is of course Shelby McHearn's Serpent and Dove trilogy. Now I just finished reading the trilogy this week and my gosh was it a wild, wild ride. Like I'm honestly speechless. If I'm being honest, I'm still like processing the last book in that trilogy. Because I will be honest, I need, to, I need to make an entire video like separate from this video about that trilogy because I have a lot of feelings about it, okay? I have a lot of feelings like deep inside myself about that trilogy. Like, it's like, I have a lot of feelings, okay? I just have a lot of feelings. Okay, go home. Anyways, so I have a lot of feelings about that, but... Um, really though, I'm still like processing those like emotions, but the things about that that make it a spooky read for me are obviously that, um, the book Serpent and Dove and the trilogy is about a witch and a witch hunter who have to get, have an arranged marriage and get married to basically cover up something else and they both hate each other. And it's very delicious and beautiful enemies to lovers. Chef's kisses. Oh, mm, yeah. Oh, amazing. It's great. So the reason why I'm recommending that as a spooky read is because it has to do with witches and like magic spells. I have put a spell on you, and now you're gone. I also feel like there's like a slightly like spooky aspect towards the end of that first book, and I feel like there are definitely elements in the next two books following the first one that are much more in the Halloween genre. So I recommend the Serpent and Dove trilogy to everyone. It is a fabulous trilogy, and I 10 out of 10 recommend you read it. Next, we're gonna talk about probably our most scariest book of the bunch. This is probably the scariest one that I'll recommend. And honestly, this one still like gives me the shivers to this day, like a little bit of a haunting feeling. Did you guys hear that? I'm scared. It is Ninth House by Leia Bardot. And if you haven't you, if you haven't read anything by Leia Bardot, you need to get on that right now because she's amazing. But Leia Bardot wrote the Shadow and Bone trilogy and she also wrote Six of Crows, which like, let's be real, everybody and their sister has read Six of Crows at this point. It's one of the best duologies on this planet. Uh, hey! Anyways, so uh, Leia Bardot dabbled in a, an adult contemporary like novel called Ninth House, 
which is basically like I would like classify it in the realm of dark academia. It's definitely in the dark academia um, like genre area, which I'll be honest, I don't normally dabble in contemporary. Contemporary is really not my thing, but because Leia Bardot wrote it, I read it. So this one truly is an adult novel. It definitely is written for like a like an older person. Like you really have to focus while you're reading. Like I remember when I read it like a year ago and I seriously like struggled for a lot of it because it was like it's so much focus to like understand everything that's happening. Hey, hey, hey come on, get lost, you two. You're making him lose his focus. Oh, sorry. Let's give you guys a quick plot summary. It's about a girl named Alex who is from LA. She has been on hard times for a while. She was part of a gang for a while, drugs, uh, like a lot of drug addiction in this book, and that's a trigger warning for you. There's a lot of like references to drug addiction and uh, sexual assault as well. So those are like a couple of trigger warnings they give with that book. But anyway, she ends up getting moving to Massachusetts to go to Yale and the most prestigious college on the planet because she has a special inkling, a, how do you say, a sixth sense about her? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, if that wasn't obvious already. I see dead people. Anyways, and so they find out that Yale is basically the university that houses all of these like different tombs with different like underground societies of like performances with necromancing and like raising the dead and stuff like that it's very spooky i'll be honest this book definitely like requires a pretty heavy trigger warning for like the drugs and the like the talk about death and like a couple of the like the things that have to do with assault and sexual abuse and things like that and so it's definitely a heavy book but it's very well written it's very well written very spooky really susan Ooh, i just scared myself that is scary as far as i know there were, it will be a sequel but overall it is a fabulous adult read if you are into something like that definitely in the spooky vibes if you're looking for something like that and definitely a great one to check out if you want to in my june wrap up i talked about hannah witten's for the wolf and um currently i don't have the book with me right now my friend's borrowing it because it's so good but the reason why I want to talk about this one in the spooky vibes is because it is one of the most like haunting and eerie books I've ever read. Like the way that Hannah Witten like writes this book, it makes you like fall in love with the world number one, but also it like creeps you out. Like it's so chilling and haunting in the wilder wood, which is where they like go into the woods. It's probably part of this book, this like fantasy world. It's so like chilling like it honestly like it, it makes me like eerie just like it just gives me an eerie theory feeling like thinking about it the forest i thought that was a joke we can't go in there and there are werewolves oh there's more than werewolves in those trees like like i definitely have to add this to those for spooky reads because it's so chilling to read about this like forest that's like enchanted that's alive and like dying but also like it possess, it's under some sort of possession and like it's also a romance so like can't complain about that because i love a romance it's very 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 good i don't like it i love it love it love it uh oh if you want to hear me talk more about that book feel free to check out my last video the i think it's my june wrap up where i talk about for the wolf but overall if you're looking for a spooky like slightly eerie more on the fantasy side read it was definitely like spooky vibes but like not really any other element to like the October fest like things going on it's definitely one for you to read I thoroughly enjoy this book it's a new adult book I will say also you could classify it as an adult book but I would say it's definitely more in the new adult genre because of the uh, like the type of pacing and the, the style the style of writing overall Hannah Wynn's book for the wolf was one of my five star reads so far for the year 2021 and so if you have not read it yet you should just read it in general but I think it's a great spooky book to add to your collection Next, we are going to be talking about one of my all-time most favorite books that I have and haven't actually had the chance to talk about on this channel because it's an older book. We're talking about Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Now, I absolutely love Jane Eyre. I love that. I think it is one of the most underrated, like, classical books of all time. First of all, it's, like, a scary story, which is so cool. Like, it's, like, an 1800s, like, scary story, like, truly written in the 1800s. First of all, second, it's a romance, and the romance is hot. And third of all, well, I don't know what third of all is, but basically it's just like one of the best things I've ever read, okay? Okay, I believe you. Jane Eyre is literally amazing. If you are looking for a gothic, haunting, romantic book, 
Jane Eyre is the book for you. To give you guys a quick plot summary of Jane Eyre, though, it is about a young girl named Jane who lived in an abusive childhood home and was moved into, like, essentially a nunnery for girls for her entire life. When, at finally, I think it's the age of 19, when she, like, graduates from her, like, schooling, she ends up becoming a, um, a nanny to this little girl who lives in this mansion by, by, that's owned by Mr. Rochester. And Mr. Rochester has this young little ward, this little French girl, who Jane comes to nanny. And we meet Mr. Rochester. Mr. Rochester is this, like, really, like, tall, dark, and handsome, and brooding young man, and... He owns this estate, and he's very lonely on this estate, but... I am a free human being with an independent will, which I now exert to leave you. Then let your will decide your destiny. I offer you my hand, my heart. Jane, I ask you to pass through life at my side. You are my equal and my likeness. Will you marry me? but like something's afoot inside of the manor. Something is afoot and we don't know what it is, but there's things going on, things happening. A game is the foot. And so you'll just have to read Jane Eyre to find out more about it, but really it is one of my like all time favorite books. It's gothic, eerie, haunting, beautiful, romantic, like unput a downable. Like I love that book. It's one of my most favorite books of all time and definitely a good one for an October reading. And our last and final spooky read is one that I reviewed and read a little bit ago. It is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. Stalking Jack the Ripper. Now, you guys know my opinions about Stalking Jack the Ripper if you watched my last video on it. But also, I was a little bit disappointed just because it got so widely hyped on Book Talk. And for those reasons, I have to give Stalking Jack the Ripper three stars. I had many words to say about it and Carrie Maniscalco. Basically, my overall vibes was that I was slightly disappointed with the romance. I thought the writing was poor. I thought that there were things that could have been improved upon. Everybody's a critic. But, but, I will say the gore element and the spook element and the murder element of that book. 1000% it goes on the best spooky reads list. Good enough for me. Like, it what it really did, like, gross me out. Like, they give, like, full body, like, descriptions of, like, corpses. And they go over, like, like, really just kind of, like, gross, eerie stuff. And oh, my God. Ew, David. It has, like, the crazy gore element. It has a slight romance element, which, like, if I'm being honest, that's not really. That's just, like, a me all the time thing. Like, I need a romance element all the time. But that romance element is kind of poor. So, if you're really, like, into wanting to read something that's, like, slightly on the more gory side... A, a quick read if I'm being honest and definitely something about like serial killers in the 1800s very spooky I would add Stalking Jack the Ripper to your October spooky reads list so that is all the books that I have to recommend for you guys today so thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did feel free to like comment and subscribe to the Live and Literature YouTube channel we are at 254 subscribers so please recommend it, recommend my channel to your friends and family and anyone else who you think would enjoy this channel about books. I'm so excited to be joining you guys for this spooky month. If you guys have any spooky reads you want to recommend to me, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. But thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!